and international law in bit and i try to merge law with politics and i believe that is the only way to understand any public law per se and there are two wonderful branches of public law there are three branches of public law but there are two wonderful branches of public law one is constitutional law and one is international law and both we study in isolation that we don't we do not study law from the prism of politics because but as uh, august comte once said that law is nothing other than uh, a by product of politics and it's very true in years old saying but it is really true so first uh, uh, methodology buster is that don't study law from isolation and don't study international law without mixing international politics into it because it is not actually international law it is a uh, more sophisticated form of international politics merged into international law that's what i feel so so that's how i'll talk to you about this okay uh, there is lots and lots of talks on china like you see the newspaper everybody is talking to china uh, talking about china i was uh, yesterday in a webinar and i was talking to uh, certain chinese students uh, on uh, this international trade law i was uh, discussing certain things with them and there i found out that uh, uh, yeah there i found out that uh, even china uh, even chinese uh, academia is changing the way they look uh, into chinese perspective but you know china is a wonderful 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 country i don't know whether how many of you have been to china but i was lucky to be there twice and i had very uh, what i say uh, a very interesting experience of chinese uh, academia as well as chinese thinking uh i don't know how many of you relate to poetry but poetry reflects china in a in a very uh, charismatic way uh, i'm a big fan of nida fazli and nida fazli once wrote that uh, i think it's in hindi and urdu i hope you will understand it i believe that these are the best lines on china he wrote um in his uh, in his famous uh, muktak muktak means which is beyond the uh, uh, certified uh, or uh, definitional poetry in his muktak he writes that do char gaam raah ko hamwar dekhna fir har kadam par ek nayi deewar dekhna darya ke is kinare sitare ho ya phool hai darya chadha hua ho to us par dekhna har aadmi mein hote hain 10 20 aadmi जिसको भी देखना कई बार देखना एंड चाइना में तो दस बीस में है चाइना में तो करोड़ों अरबों हैं तो चाइना को तुम्हें कई बार देखना पड़ेगा एंड दैट्स वेयर वी लैक वी डो नॉट अंडरस्टैंड चाइनीज लॉ एंड चाइनीज पॉलिटिक्स बिकॉज वी आर हैबिचुएटेड वी आर ट्रेन टू सी लॉ एंड पॉलिटिक्स इन अ वेरी सर्टन वे वी आर ऑल बाई प्रोडक्ट ऑफ अमोक्रेटिक ऑल बॉर्न एंड ब्रॉट अप इन अ डेमोक्रेटिक इंडिया so we see everything from that prism our law is so uh, uh, what i say west ministerial and modern that we do not able to grasp what would be the chinese law and chinese politics could be so it is really important to see china from chinese prism now let's see let's see let, let's take 5 minutes uh, or 10 minutes time to understand chinese politics and chinese uh, how 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 chinese Uh, how how china has established itself now there are certain things uh, like i don't know whether you have gone through the chinese history or not but there are certain uh, chinese aspects for example uh, uh, and all these will make sense as i'll come to the post covid chinese foreign policy so please bear with me because these are really important anecdotes which uh, will reflect that what i want to say is hidden in chinese history so uh, uh, the first trace of chinese history is in 1000 to 2000 bc yeah it's that back there was a famous dynasty at that time known as zai dynasty x y a zai dynasty sometimes they call it zia dynasty but uh, chinese in chinese term they call it zai dynasty so zai dynasty is a mythological dynasty there is no scientific evidence um, uh, proving that that dynasty was was existing but chinese still believe in that Uh, they believe that there was a flood in yellow river and then there was a half 
human and half dragon uh, uh, saviors and warriors came who established the yaro river civilization now this is a 2000 year back uh, dynasty and there is hardly scientific evidence as to it but still you find uh, the prominence of dragon in certain pictorial arts of china and why i'm telling you this that this is the first civilizational trace of china and chinese current political social and cultural philosophy is still based on that pictorial form of half human half dragon uh, theology which is may, which may be mythological but still prominent in chinese politics okay so that was the ancient part of china there was one more ancient part of china which still makes reference and relevance that was confucius confucius was born um, main confucius philosophy was between 551 bc to 479 bc and confucius was uh, added with buddhism when there was a han han dynasty han dynasty is like a gupta period uh, could be the gupta period for uh, china it's the golden era of china in that time silk road the famous silk road concept came now all these things make sense why because silk road the new emergence of silk road you see it right now the 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 the, the dream project of china is one belt one road that bri bo uh, belt and road initiative at that time they first of all established the oriental culture philosophy and confucius philosophy why confucius philosophy is important because confucius philosophy is one part of confucius and buddhist confucius philosophy is that if you are surrounded with neighbors which are hostile now please pay attention to that if you are surrounded with neighbors which are hostile and if you have given them any bold or if you have given them any you if you have attacked them and gave them certain wounds never let your opponents wounds heal now this is a old philosophy 551 bc to 479 bc still finds relevance because china do not settle their boundary disputes with their rivals you see their boundary dispute with vietnam with manchuria with japan with india so a 1000 to 2000 bc year old philosophy still make relevance to chinese current uh, foreign and domestic policy the 2000 bc to 2000 ad old philosophy of han dynasty merged with confucianism confucius still make a relevance so this is what china is that they are there are certain things with china which do not change like 1000 year 2000 bc it's more than like 4000 years maybe more than that even that philosophy still existent in china but the way we see current china it has changed in a drastic way so modern china is actually about three watershed years three watershed events that happened in china in china and why i am telling you this because these are the only this is the only way you can learn and unlearn china it is really important to unlearn china because we have read and studied china and chinese foreign policy and chinese domination all by indianized way of writing china or by westernized way of writing china and both are incompetent because both of them have not seen china in the way we should see so there are three important things that happened in china the third important thing is going on right now but the first important thing was the emergence of mao zedong or famously known as mao zedong he was a leader of communism and he unified china in post japanese invasion there was a brutal japanese invasion of china in 1937 and it was a lot of brutal so he was a warlord and he started this communism theory and uh, he jo uh, bhi japan uh, atrocity karke chhod ke chala gaya tha jin jin kshetron ko he came and he won that area then he calc- he merged them together and established some kind of nation and uh, that was the modern china with which jo ki post japanese invasion ke baad hua you know uh, that was the first watershed year uh, and then in 1949 he established people republic of china in which mao became 
again mao zedong became the supreme chairman he was the authoritarian but at that time in 1949 they established certain things which was a by product of han dynasty and also zia dynasty one thing they could establish is that this is one country whole china is one country and they established one lie and that lie still goes on with china that it is one ethnicity now please pay attention to it it is one country one ethnicity and one civilization and they traced it to han ethnicity they say in china they say that this is one ethnic group all of them are han which is not true some of them are tibetan some of them are manchurian some of them are japanese cross bred with china so the ethnicity is not han everywhere in china but they have established this thing that this is one country one ethnicity and one civilization and then mao came and mao inserted one more thing for fourth which is one party and the one party became people republic of china the chinese communist party so this is a one one wonderful lie that mao zedong was able to establish that china is one civilizational state it is distinct from nation state it is distinct from an independent or uh, like same, some somewhere like semi democratic state it's one party one country one civilization and one state so that's what makes the current polity of china he merges the traces of zia dynasty han dynasty and confucianism and as i told you all those philosophies have the relevance in the current politics of china as well as the current and before uh, the, the 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 geopolitics and also the foreign policy the second important event happened in china in 1970 to 1997 when deng xiaoping came into the power and deng xiaoping is a really important figure for whole of the world because there is a famous joke about deng xiaoping once upon a time uh in that era uk uh, us president carter uk pm tony blair russian prime, premier yeltsin and chinese premier deng xiaoping was traveling in a car and this joke is actually uh, makes so much relevance that you will understand like uh, so uh, when they were traveling in the car uh, us president carter said that okay this there, there are two ways one is left and one is right you don't signal anything just blindly follow right and go on right and you are able to understand right means capitalism left means socialism then there was a uk president who uk's prime minister who was following him tony blair he said it to his driver that you switch off all the lights just blindly follow the american the american way and turn into right then there was a russian president who was uh, premier yeltsin who was also there so he saw that uk went on right us went on right so i also went on right so they also went on right but there were deng xiaoping at the back he said that you stay on the left you signal your car left so the left indicator is on but as soon as as soon as the crossroad reach you reach to the crossroad you take the immediate right that what tells what china is today because it is a form of capitalism now wrapped around the uh, like a silver foil of communism so that's what uh, he did he he brought on uh, the, the the idea of reverse engineering the market based economy and he added the fourth element to it as i was telling one state one party one country or what civilization he added one more part of it which was one market that china will be the market for global production as well as global consumption and you see that era of 1970 to 1997 when he died he was deng xiaoping was the premier till his death and he made the modern china the big huge china who holds on huge part of global gdp so that was 1970 to 1997 and the third most important thing that happened to china is the emergence of gen, uh, sh- uh, xi jinping now xi jinping is let me tell you xi jinping is when you see chinese uh, current politics xi jinping is actually much more powerful than deng xiaoping and 
almost equivalent to uh, Mao Zedong or Mao Zedong. Why I'm telling you that he is the only premier who changed the constitution of uh, China. And he said uh, in his uh, uh, changed constitution, he said this thing that, oh, okay, sorry, my, my, my video is there or not? No, sir, it's off. Now? No, sir, not yet. It's showing that back camera is on, but so it was not there from the starting till there now. Uh, yes, sir, it's off from the starting. Okay, I'm sorry. Just give me a minute. I'll, I'll change the setting. Uh... So it's visible now. Is it is it visible now? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, not that tech savvy. So, uh, am I visible to you, all of you? No, sir. <laughs> just a minute, just a minute. So, uh, I was telling you about uh, uh, the emergence of she and uh, just a minute, Adya. Has to be on by now. Is it okay now? Sir, you are not visible. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Now it is visible. Now, now is it okay? again? Again went. Oh, now? No, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Hello, guys. So I cannot see myself. So that's why I was thinking that whether I am, I, am I am I. Visible and so audible I guess, both? Uh, uh, the back camera is on, I guess. Okay, I'm sorry again. Uh, <laughs> now? No, now issues. Okay? no, sir. <laughs> yes, okay. sir, now it is okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. So, because I was not able to see myself, that's why I was like really confused. Yeah. Fine. So, I was telling you about uh, Xi Jinping, and Xi Jinping became the biggest powerhouse of China. He changed three things in China. First is the market occupation. So now you see that China is uh, China is high, uh, largest consumer, producer, and exporter. He also changed certain things in geopolitics, which are going to make huge change. You see, the current uh, WHO uh, Director General, Dr. Ted Ross, is appointed under the pressure of China. He was the one who changed the uh, Director General of WIPO, and he was also uh, Xi Jinping was very instrumental in the changes that were that were made in wto so that is a part of a different thing but what i'm saying is that china has been interfering into geopolitics post uh, the era of uh, deng xiaoping and in particularly in xi jinping's era because xi jinping added the sixth part of one philosophy i've told you one state one civilization one ethnicity one market and she added the last and the most important part which was one world and how one world is there and that world means chinese world that you see chinese impact and chinese presence through obor that is the best example to see china's global aspiration the one belt and one road initiative and bri you see the current defense and strategic thinking of china he has bases almost everywhere in the world almost everywhere in every coastal state africa or even even us even sorry even even europe uh, even in south asia and southeast asia peninsular world in pacific you find bases of chinese naval uh, command almost everywhere so that's what is modern china now why all these things matter because you will see chinese foreign policy and philosophy only through this. So right now what happened is there was an outbreak of China, outbreak of Corona in China through the wet markets in Wuhan. Uh, wet markets have been a part of Chinese uh, economy. Uh, certain people uh, go through that wet market. And if you see the Wuhan's wet market and Guangzhou wet market or any other provinces wet market, they are the place where uh, no, this uh, animal to animal genome based transmission of virus is really easy. Some people say that it uh, was 
uh, somewhere linked to a lab which uh, which was working and there was no safety protocol linked to it i do not go into details with that whether it is from the lab or whether it is from the wet market we are that that's trivial the thing is that that th this got spread and there is no doubt about it that china hided the viruses for Yes, sir. So China uh, ha has tried to hide the virus for a long time. China restricted and forced the information regarding the virus. China influenced uh, through WHO. In that point, you have missed a very critical point. You know one country like Taiwan. Taiwan raised the issue about uh, a suspicious virus uh, to WHO. And this was on 15th of January. Yes. You can imagine this thing that 15 January 2020, China sent, uh, Taiwan sent a full 15 uh, page memorandum to WHO. Now, interestingly, WHO, uh, Taiwan is not a part of WHO because of Chinese pressure. And uh, you know how, how WHO responded to that? WHO said that Taiwan is not a member of the uh, member of WHO, so we are not obliged to listen to you. As a part of a Chinese state, you should come through your nation that is china so <laughs> that's what is really important but uh, you see that's what is uh, that that much of suppression of information was there uh, from the uh, from the world that china did now you see uh, some people are saying that there would be a huge pressure on china after this covid thing is over people are going to counter china people are going to change the foreign policy europe is going to bomb China. Yesterday I was talking a, a crappy news channel called as India TV. They were saying that um, the, 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 the people will nuke China or something like that. But let's see, there are how many countries are there who have publicly said this thing that we will go against China. I've listed them. It's Australia, Italy, UK, USA and Japan. So USA is under a very difficult circumstances that we will discuss. Japan the, you know, Hamisha Khatas Raya, Japan or Chin Kerishtome, Kaskar, Shenkaku Island, Dojar Barava, Lechuke Bad. UK says the same thing that USA says. Italy, again, the most affected region. Australia, trying to be show, trying to steal the thunder because he thinks that this is an era uh, exactly like the second post Second World War era where there is an emergence of new multilateralism. So now China, um, Australia has a stake to take into that multilateralism and also see how Australia was backlashed last time they met at nuclear supplier group meeting in uh, the NSG meeting in which China actually backlashed uh, Australia. So there was a politics behind it. So other than that, which country has criticized China? Like, has India criticized it? No, because India is seeing the waters, testing the waters, how warm it is, and whether it is right to criticize China or not. So, uh, in that context, it's really important to study China's relationship with different states. First of all, we should study the Chinese relationship with the USA. Now, there are always uh, students and friends, there are always two parts of foreign relationship. Majorly, it's, it's divided into several parts, but two parts are critically important. First is its political, geopolitical, and strategic relationship. And second part is economical relationship. Generally, it is considered that the first part is more important, the political, geopolitical, and strategic relationship. But you should see that second part becomes way more important when we are into a epidemic or hit or pandemic hit economy we all the states in the world are pandemic hit economy i was going through paul krugman's article on new york times he said that there would be more than 20 trillion dollar loss to global economy my friend that is a huge amount and if there is a 20 trillion dollar loss no country however big however strong and however huge the country's geopolitical aspirations are they will primarily focus on their economy. This philosophy is very famously called as 
inward healing you know it's a, it's a term amart singh used so you should see like if you see the spanish flu outbreak after spanish flu all countries were looked into their own politics and they have forgotten the world geopolitical stature or political stature for at least 20 30 years corona is not going go, going to be as big as if not bigger i hope touch wood uh, that it would be as big uh, calamity as spanish flu was so uh, but you see the relationship of china and usa in both fronts political and economical first of all i'll discuss the political front now no doubt usa is on back foot no doubt uh, usa has been hit hard no doubt usa has been insecure i i believe that it is much more insecure than 911 i know there is an accusation and counter accusation from both sides you see the uh, the, the secretary of uh, state for usa pompeo recently gave an interview to abc news i think it's yesterday he gave an interview to abc news and he used harsh terms like they have been calling it the chinese virus wuhan virus they have been saying that now china has to pay the price for it and our claims would be much higher than italy or germany or any other state and there was a, there is an accusation and counter accusation from china the the terminology with which with uh, which uh, the american uh, officials and uh, rather trump and chinese officials are using is a very you uh, know uh, cold warish language what i mean cold warish language is like what happened after the second world war between america and russia the same kind of terms and and uh, uh, indo and uh, uh, hindi mein uske liye ek acha shabd hota hai kataksh us tarah ke shabdon ka prayog ho raha hai dono deshon ke beech mein so on political front i find some ten tensions are there and tensions are going to rise but current polity is not dependent upon uh, how a geopolitical interest are measured current political relationships my brother my 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 friends are depend determined by politics actually boy hindi ki line hai paisa bolta hai but let's see kahan paisa bol raha hai china aur america ke beech mein now the biggest deal of this millennium happened between us and china the famous us china deal this deal is as big as you could say whole of europe trade deal to all the countries in the world is lesser than the us china trade deal it's as as huge deal like this now of course because of the political and tension the america will search for an alternative so is china will search for an alternative what which what alternatives of uh, are available to both states so i have listed few brics as an alternative asean as an alternative south asia as an alternative russia as an alternative europe as an alternative now if i combine all these alternatives together then these all these alternatives together they do not have an economic capacity to match either usa or china so we are into that we are in that kind of situation where us china straight relations are irreplaceable because there is no alternative available currently so what would happen is that because of their trade dependency on each other uk usa and china both they will search for smaller level alternatives <coughs> so <coughs> but as i say duniya ki sabse badi majboori hai china so you usa cannot live without china so is china cannot live without usa because they are very much dependent upon their trade it is not a cold war like america and russia where they both could ed- could live without uh, trade dependency so a trade dependency will ease out political conflict eventually so i believe that yes uh, will usa lose its first position i am sure about it but the second thing is that that even it loses the first position it still remain the second position and the second and the versus first demand would be there whether it is a joe biden who will come as who i hope i i hope i'm i'm, I'm really uh, annoyed with this uh, trump's way of handling america so i hope joe biden comes 
but if even if joe biden comes or any other any other official comes to america i do not find that economic uh, because of the economic dependency of these states on each other i do not find these political tensions will be there in between them for long although they both will search for an alternative and a wonderful alternative so these nations like brics asean south asia including india russia and europe has a very good chance to be each other's alternative and to play matlab bependi ka lote wala role that whether when it is beneficial they can be towards america when that is beneficial we will be towards china so that is really important because right now it is all about capturing market only those nations survive in current world who are very good in economy so economic factor is the classical adjustment factor in the world economy determines the political relationship not vice versa so in cold war era and world war era the things were changing in a different way but in post cold war or world war era and post covid era everything shall rotate around the economy and the chain for economy the key for economy is in the hands of these two big states and certainly in the hands of china so i do not find the china us relationship go to a total turmoil although there would be tensions but agar main sirf ye bataunga ki kuch cheeze badalne nahi wali to it does not sound like in young people's term it is it do not sound sexy so let's add some element of uh, spice into it so whose relationships are going to change one relationship that is going to change is a relationship between china and japan now japanese companies have uh, uh, are moving out of china and they have been moving out of china since senkaku islands issue and since uh, japan suffered the humiliating uh, legal defeat at uh, this united nations convention of law sea arbitration so uh, japanese companies are shifting uh, from china we i will find that you will I, i i believe that you will find a much more political and economical turmoil between them again the issue is that japan and china both can exist without each other it's all about like if you want to understand uh, relationship uh, foreign relationship you should understand the relationship between a boyfriend and a girlfriend if boyfriend and girlfriend have an alternatives and nowadays young people have many alternatives so if you have a good alternative available you can live without it you can go without each other so they would be turmoil but if there is less opportunities and less alternatives available you will be codependent and subdependent and in that subdependent world there would be turmoil yes there would be a turmoil between uh, china and italian relationship because there is hardly any dependency china uh, italy trades to china plus 1.32% of their gdp china trades to italy way less than 1% of their gdp so yes those relationships are going to change so if i see certain certain america uh, certain european states like germany italy and if i include france into it and certain other parts small uh, like poland and all that states uh, whose dependency are is not as much on china as the dependency of usa and uh, china they will have a political and economical shift from china so the europe uh, european union currently we see will, is going to change second factor in europe is that european union is not supportive supporting enough to european state you see the italian uh, prime minister giuseppe came on tv and said that that if european union is not going to support what kind of relevance european union would have so what i foresee right now is that you might find a european union outside european union and what i mean is that you might find a european uh, union expansion or states going and allying to some other non european union state like india or brazil or sorry in like india or usa or maybe china whoever is going to support them now this question becomes really important that what who will be not as who would be in the position to help the world answer is it is either china or there is any other possibility or america i would say no so right now the biggest majboori for the world is that is tu nahi zakm diya hai tum hi dawa doge so the zakm dene wala and the dawa dene wala is the same so that's why i would find more alignment towards 
European towards Chinese. Maybe if India is going to play a vital role, India could come into it. Uh, South Africa could do it. Or bigger states like Israel could do it. Like Israel has... I was reading a newspaper today. Like they have found a vaccine. So Israel, Israel can do anything. They made an ICBM in 15 days. They are brilliant, like amazing people. And if you go to Israel, you will understand that what kind of legal education platform they have. So uh, my experience with Israel is really different. So Israel could be one of the game changer. Uh, uh, one country which we miss, South Korea could be the game changer. Uh, so is uh, India could be the game changer in that. But you cannot take China away from there. Uh, China India relationship, uh, uh, yes, uh, that's that's we talk. Uh, let's admit you think that in China. India relationship, we have always been very cautious because we know Chinese from their core. They are like, there is only two oriental philosophies in the world. One is of the philosophy of India and Southeast Asia. One is the oriental philosophy of China. If anybody in the world has uh, possibility to know China to its core, it is Indian and oriental philosophy. So what we are doing is, we are not saying anything to China. We are doing a very cautious diplomatic approach. You see, India has banned the MHA has banned the use of Zoom app because it is stealing the data. When you log in into Skype, do, doesn't he ask whether you give access to your photos and audios and whether you give access to the phone? So all apps can steal data. But Im immediately government came and said, Zoom app is <laughs> stealing the data, don't use the Zoom app. I'm really thankful for that MHA guideline because my students were eating my brains out because of this Zoom app. They have been calling at 11 p.m. Sir, take a lecture because you one day you said in the class that if there is a doubt in constitution, you will be taking the class whole night. So you have to take a lecture. So I'm thankful to that. But you see how, how things have been changing in India. Like the way India has reported to hydroxychloroquine to both. Uh, they have India has exported certain part of it to China, uh, but the problem is that API, the, uh, the 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 pharmaceutical agent for that comes from China itself. So uh, the pattern of China is going to change, uh, but it is also very important to see how China hegemony is going to be there in the world. Like I'll conclude in ten minutes. Uh, Adya, is it fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Totally fine. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Thank you. So Chinese hegemony, how Chinese hegemony is going to rule the world, you should understand. There was a 19th Congress of Chinese Communist Party. Uh, Xi Jinping, in which Xi Jinping has said that he will be the premier for the for the for the lifetime and all that. So in which they amended the so-called constitution of China, if it is the constitution of China. So so they have settled certain aims for China. There was an aim for 2035. There was also an aim released for 2050. Can you imagine the 2050s aim is to capture three fourths of the GDP of the world? Yes, you heard it right. To capture the three fourths of the GDP of the world. So I believe that maybe it is an overestimated goal, but because of COVID and post corona hit global economy, I'm very sure that China is going to achieve this three-fourth capture of world GDP. And when I'm, I'm not saying the producing GDP, the export-based world GDP, by 2050, I'm 100% sure that China will reach there 10 years before. There was a goal to capture uh, almost 50% of global export-based GDP by 2035. I'm 100% sure that China will be there before 2030. So there is no doubt about it that China is going to become a superpower, if not already the superpower. And the interesting part with China is that when China will become a superpower, or if China is a superpower, it will be the only superpower. So when, why I'm saying you this, let's see the BRI, Bo, Bo, uh, no, no, the, the famous Obor project. As soon as you land into Shanghai or as soon as you land into Beijing, you'll find these huge hoardings by Communist Party of China with a photograph of Xi Jinping regarding Obor or One Belt, One Road. You, if you go through like uh, any of the states who have been aligned to this, like Nepal or Pakistan or Afghanistan, on their highways, you see Xi Jinping's photo and this Obor project. No country is in the position to 
to challenge this obo right now so america and europe who were thinking to provide an alternative for obo they will say goodbye to it because they will go for inward healing they are very much hit by it so inward healing is really important post world it would be the same situation like post world war 2 it would be the same situation like spanish flu and in both these situations the world has gone for an inward healing and the states who were in the capacity in a, in certain capacity to reform their economy were the leading states that's what has happened to america that's what has happened to china in world war 2 and post spanish flu now you say that okay so fine maybe agree to it but china is also dependent upon the world yes china is dependent upon the world but you have missed a very important data now this i would say the most important data of my whole talk i generally give data but this is a very important data in 2008 total 32.6% of the chinese gdp was dependent upon export and import so global trade was Uh, leading into china 32.6% but in 2018 it dropped down to 19.5% so the new market as i told you mao tse tung was talking about the one market philosophy yes. but xi jinping arrived and he changed it into a one world philosophy which was one chinese world and you see a wonderful drop on export dependency and i have gone through the current uh, data by imf 2020 it is as less as 17.1% so the total loss to china would be if there is total ban to export and import to china which is i do not see because the world is dependent upon china so i would i would say that it would increase but worst to worst circumstances even if it decreases it will only take 17% of current chinese gdp whereas american european indian gdp is so much export and import dependent it will engulf more than 50 to 60 and in certain cases like america to 68% of their gdp world cannot survive this thing and that's why world would be dependent upon uh china why world is dependent upon china because world needs three cures for this problem first is a standard medical cure that standard medical cure has possibility that it would come from china reason being that china is in the only condition who has gone through the virus genome in as much details as any other country so china's role in the finding of possible medical cure for this problem is really important second is the global effective economic cure with to fight global recession you cannot find without china third area is one area in which china lacks china lacks in the sophisticated geopolitics now this is an area for india this is the area for all the rest of the world that how we are going to change the current uh, the, the 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 upcoming geopolitics in upcoming geopolitics now anybody of you do you want a who like in tedros's who that what we see right now is one of the worst incident that happened to who you can imagine on 30th january 2020 tedros's tedros's tweet and who tweet was there that in china we have done a study that this uh, virus is not human to human transmissible it cannot transmit from human to human being ye kalank hai jisko dhoonne mein who ko aur tedros ko sadiyan lag jayengi i do not want that organization i do not want or india do not want a uh, united nations security council who could discuss on kashmir but cannot discuss on uh, covid uh, the only reason is you cannot discuss on covid because china has the rotating chair of united nations security council if we do not want that kind of multilateral world where taiwan who was the whistle blower for the world was not heard we want an organization who can deep go deep into a state study it research it and come back and we do not want a reactive organization we want a preemptive organization so all these cures comes from china third is the area for india and the rest of the world first to first maybe europe can do it israel can do it but second the economic cure is dependent upon china first 
cure is dependent upon China. Second, almost 80% cure is dependent upon China. Third, 0% is dependent upon China. And third would be the factor, the sophisticated geopolitical situation is the uh, is the is the area where India could take a lead, South Africa could take a lead, Brazil could take a lead, Korea could take a lead, Israel could take a lead, USA could take a lead, or any other state could take a lead. Because I, I, I let me end it uh, the way I'm, I, I, I want to end it. Because I recently watched a movie, Life of Pi, after Irfan Khan's death. And in that movie, he said a wonderful thing that Bhagwan ne har insan ko, but I, I, it's in English, but it makes more sense in Hindi. Uh, so Bhagwan ne har insan ko ek taqat di hai. Aur uski jo sabse majboot taqat hoti hai, wahi uski sabse majboot kamzori hoti hai. You see, aaj America is mahamari ko control nahi kar paaya, kyunki uski sabse majboot taqat thi free press, azadi, civil rights. So nobody wants to follow the lockdown. You see how people are agitating in Miami or California or so many states. Ki sabse majboot taqat hi uske sabse badi kamzori bhakti hai. China ki sabse majboot taqat hai unka authoritarian one party, one culture, one civilization, one market state. Yehi inki sabse badi kamzori bhi hai. Because of this, agar free press hota to aapko lagta hai ki ye virus nikal pata. Agar democracy hoti ya democratic rights ke prati vigilancey hoti to ye problem itni badi kabhi nahi hoti. तो हर ना दर्द का हर जख्म का इलाज भी वो खुद ही होता है और इस परेशानी का कारण भी यही है और निवारण भी यही बनेगा एंड दैट्स द वन दैट इज वन एरिया इन व्हिच इंडिया कैन टेक अ लीड बिकॉज़ अगेन आवर सिविलाइजेशन थ्योरी इज नॉट बेस्ड ऑन वन एथनिसिटी वी डू नॉट बिलीव लाइक चाइना दैट वी आर वन एथनिसिटी वी आर मल्टी एथनिक ग्रुप वी डू नॉट बिलीव दैट वर्ल्ड इज वन मार्केट बिकॉज़ वी बिलीव इनटू मल्टी मार्केट and we also do not believe in one world we believe in whole world as we say vasudev kutumbakam and that is the way to change the world to break all philosophies of china one by one by one and tell them that this is what chinese want you to see and that's how you should see china and that's how you should respond and in that phase seminars and webinars like these could play a very vital role where people can come and discuss china in hold together new prism so that you could see the real china yourself that's what i tried to do i hope i made some sense to you and if there is any question i would really be happy to answer them thank you that's it from my side thank you so much sir for enlightening us students the panel is open for asking the questions you may unmute your mic or ask the question or you can use the chat box Sir, I guess till then I should begin with one of my questions. Mm -hmm. Sir, as you see, sir, China always hides its military plans over the economic plans. Okay. So what's yes. your say in this? The philosophy of hide and not to reveal it is in all uh, in Chinese. Uh, it's an ages-old Chinese philosophy. and the thing is that that china do not only hide this china china hides uh, their own democratic setup so called democratic setup their own market secrets their own uh, engineering secrets so that is a part of china and world the problem with china is again as i have told you adya that we have seen the world the way we are habituated to see we are habituated to see openness we are habituated to see free market we are habituated to see free speech but china is a very new country born on 1949 with one uh, with certain assertion that it is one country one state one ethnicity one market one world so to break this uh, stereotype we need certain time for china now some uh, you see uh, dr li wangyang who who was the visual brower for it He 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 risked his life to reveal a problem. You see, uh, the the last Nobel laureate from China, the essay writer, uh, that V that G, uh, Winbill. So he was also there who revealed all these things about Chinese philosophy. 
Chinese authoritarianism. But it will take time because civil rights, democracy, openness, it will come more to China or up China rope bini sakta because China has become a part of a global world. So China will learn the art of being a global citizen, but it will take time because it is an old civilizational false false that China has established on their people and also their own uh, on their politics to hide things and to tell things only that is necessary and at time tell a lie rather than an un, an inconvenient truth. Yes, I totally agree with your points. Uh, any other question? Any participants want to ask? There is only two possibility that uh, either people understood everything or they have not or understood anything. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's why there is no question. There are some people who is typing. Okay, good, good. Ask the possible. You can unmute your mic and ask the question. So what I think China is not the uh, one webinar topic or one hour topic to discuss. Yeah, yeah we need more time for that. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yes. All right, um, I have just uploaded certain talks uh, of mine on my YouTube page. It's uh, Panch Rishi talks. So you could, uh, if anybody is interested, they can go through it. Um, I'll be uploading a China talk, uh, like including my visit to China and my experiences on Chinese uh, constitutional philosophy. I'll be uploading that too. So if anybody is interested, they can subscribe or view it at Punch Rishi Talks. I'll share it to you. You can share it to students. Definitely, sir. So here is one question. Yes, I may read it for you. While the US-China relation were at peak, what about mm. the international law breach? International? Law breach. Okay. Um, Asta, it's a very innocent question of yours. And why I'm saying it's an innocent question? Because the world do not believe into international law breach. You see, uh, international law is such a law that its breach is only important when you have an enforcement agency to enforce it. Now, the current world or the current United Nations uh, world is not going to punish any international law breacher if the country is as huge as China or as big as America because both of them are the veto power holder and both of them have not followed decisions of ICJ, ICRCJ, International Arbitration Tribunal, International Army Court Tribunal. You see, there are so many ICJ case laws which have not been followed by both of, the, of these states. Like the judgments on Shenkaku Island, uh, uh, China has not followed like, 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 uh, like comprehensive test Ban treaty, both of these states have not followed. Like the Earth Summit, both of these eight states have not followed. So international law breach looks very fine in theory against small states like Angola, like Sudan, or like Maldives, or like Australia, or at times against India. But bigger powers do not consider international law the way we consider it and we read it. So uh, it's a nice uh, I, I would say international law breach uh, Miss Jan is a nice jargon and has become a jargon for at least bigger states so. Sir, I guess with this I move uh, sir. Okay. there is one more question doesn't that give a way to hinder the asset Asset law by the other countries of the world. The oh, question sorry. is continued by the Asta. Okay, Asta, Asta, truly, it gives other states to hinder the world. That's what I'm talking about the new multilateralism. Now, why these or why, why why states do not obey international law? Because when we see that states do change their international legal obligation as per their whims and fancies, 
even smaller states do that and that's why i see but that's why i'm telling you that because china will not be made accountable for this covid outbreak we would see a new multilateral world you know asta uh, like second world war resulted because of the failure of league of nations after the first world war and that's why we went on to establish a new world order in the form of uh, united nations so you may find a restructuring of united nations post covid or a new world order altogether post covid because united nation has shown huge incompetency to deal with this so that's how international law would change that we will try to fill up the gaps of these this uh, org- uh, these organs these international organizations and we will try to make new organization or make substantial changes in these organizations otherwise what you are apprehending is going to be true so your apprehension could be true if we are not going to change the new world uh, new multilateral world asta i think you have all the answers thank you so much so we have some more i guess so the next question is uh, from palak what okay. do you think extraordinary economic growth of china in last mm-hmm. three decade is dependent upon what uh, there are three things um, uh, who's asked question is that uh, sir palak palak uh, uh, could could you ask palak that which phone she uses just the phone brand uh, palak which phone do you use may i know like which phone you use asked huh? uh sorry uh, uh, adya which phone you uh, so use so oneplus oneplus so it's a chinese phone it's fine yes, but sir. you find you find uh, any phone anywhere in the world manufactured by any country it's like whenever you have a time just go through uh, just open your phone or whenever you are going it to repair i hope you will never take it to repair but if you take it to your phone to repair just open your phone and see the battery of that phone that battery is of a company called either huawei or zte Fine. these are the two prominent companies zte and huawei file now this is a uh, this is a very important data i am giving to all of you zte and huawei both are the uh, company in the uh, under the same shareholding so these two companies file more patents at wipo and uh, also triadic patents which is an american office european U- sorry european office triadic patent they file more patents per year than whole of south asia south east asia and pacific combined so china, you can imagine chinese growth chinese growth is because of their reverse engineering one part and second is their huge capacity to manufacture at a unprecedented rate you see how they built a hospital of like uh, like 10000 beds in like less than 28 or 26 hours so because of their manufacturing sector and because of their reverse engineering technological dependent sector and also there are certain uh, there are certain geopolitical factors that it is supplying the needs of africa it's supplying the needs of uh, southeast asia and pacific and also working very smartly uh, china is the only country who makes the uh, the best part of uh, the best device on certain thing and worst and the cheapest device so it's it's the only country in the world who can manufacture the most expensive phone and the cheapest phone and cheapest technology so i would say technology their geopolitical understanding and one party uh, manufacturing system where everything belongs to state and uh, an individual is just contributing to the state and certain brilliant uh, like uh, uh, policy frame of changes that's what has led to this huge or unprecedented growth of uh, uh, economic growth of china sir so i think the best technology comes from china and the worst technology comes from china <laughs> i would not say worst but the cheapest yes but the cheapest yes sir yeah. so here is one another question mm-hmm. uh, are we still envisaging another global slowdown while chinese economy is now picking up chinese economy has never slowed down even when wuhan was worst hit shanghai was producing 
more than 132 percent of its capacity. So China, China, what China was uh, surprisingly uh, did wonderful is to restrict in certain parts of China. Wuhan is a global corridor of China, but other than Wuhan, there are certain brilliant corridors for China like uh, Guangzhou province, Shanghai, Beijing, even certain parts of South, uh, South, uh, sorry, North uh, Japanese part of uh, China was working tremendously at that time. So because of that, uh, what you see is a global slowdown because global economy is very much hit, but uh, Chinese rise is there. You see, uh, even when it was worst hit at that time, it was rising. You can't imagine the situation right now. It, now it has went back to the, the uh, old capacity. And you see, Adya, one thing I would really want to say, that China is producing right now, if you see, the China is producing the highest number of PPEs, gloves, thermometers, hydroxychloroquine, uh, uh, anti-retroviral drugs. So it is so smart that it changes its technology way faster. China was the first country who said their automobile sectors not to manufacture automobile, but to uh, but manufacture these ventilators. And China is going to uh, supply ventilators for all the world. So China changes their uh, uh, production, uh, uh, like uh, the, uh, the products for pro uh, production way faster than anybody else. China is uh, the you know, global need. Ka wo Brahma hai. He knows everything that what global need is. And they manufacture it so fast and so quick. Like last time I visited there, they manufacture one car like uh, in one of the center of their uh, manufacturing unit, they took us. In China, in China, you don't go anywhere. They take you. It's like more like a North Korean system. But when I went to one part of Shanghai, there was a banner in Chinese. I asked somebody to translate it. A Chinese student was there. I asked her to translate and she told me, sir, it, it means that we manufacture a car uh, before you finish up your noodles. So that is the growth of their, uh, that's the pace of their growth. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, moving towards the voting. Uh... Hello, am yeah, I audible, yeah. sir? Yeah, yeah, you are. Moving towards the vote of thanks, Himanshu. Are you there? there? Is a question coming. If there are questions, I'm really, uh, I'll okay. be really happy to answer if there is. So there is one question from my side that okay, uh, India is still uh, facing some kind of problems from China, such as the Doklam issues, and there were threats of uh, China supplying weapons and ammunition to the terrorist organization in Northeast. Mm -hmm. Still, we are like uh, we are opposing China on on one hand and still doing trade with uh, China on another hand. Just mm -hmm. like uh, we are doing, we are taking steps against Pakistan. Why can't we take uh, steps against China, the same okay. kind of steps. Yeah, because we supply only we supply only cotton and uh, sugar to China. Eh, sorry, to Pakistan. But we supply yes, and take everything from China. Na? So again, as I've told you, Himanshu, everything is dependent upon how much trade dependent you are on that state. China is in a unique position that no country whatsoever, except very few or very small or very uh, self-dependent state, no country has potential to go in a direct conflict or armed conflict with China because their trade is dependent upon them. Now, the only way India could survive is that Chinese trade is also Chinese trade is also depend China is also dependent upon India. Why I'm telling that there is no US China clash because both are interdependent. So until and unless we both are China and India are interdependent, then there would be no trade clash and there would be no these things. Yes, Doklam happened and China keeps on doing this thing that China, Chinese uh, troops come and go and say that Sakchim ka ye wala area hamara hai, do tin din rehte, majhe, matla, idhar ghoomte phirte, phir wapas chale jate. As I've told you, their philosophy is that never let the wounds of your opponent heal and you can press them when you, when, when you want to press them. So China is not a country who is going to settle dispute with any of these states. The same thing they do with Manchuria, the same thing they do with Vietnam, the same thing they do with Japan, the same thing they do with India. Strangely, with all these four states, China also trades. And Chinese trade do not stop even when there is a turmoil. So when there was a Doklam, we were purchasing 
uh, these uh, like uh, this API, the huge, the biggest API supplied to India was at the time of Doklam. So we are producing the hydroxychloroquine right now because we were trading to China at the time of uh, Doklam. So you see, the world is in that kind of situation that I don't know. Pakistan is North Korea, Pakistan, Iran is a nonsensical state. So you can ban trade with them. You can say that we are not going to have any conversation with you, but not going to be with China. You see, um, the, 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 if it is one fourth of global GDP, how could you say that we are not going to trade with China? And if you are not going to trade with China, you cannot do anything with that. So the the question is not about the conflict between China and India. I do not foresee a conflict between China and India. India would be a levering point for both of them. And how the leverage will be gained? That number two. If it is now, if number two is China, China is want, want India to be their side. If number two is uh, USA, USA want India to be their side. So India is right. waiting. India is playing the role of, देखो आराम से आने दो situation बढ़ने दो जिसके तरफ फायदा होगा हम उसकी तरफ चले जाएंगे और जब होगा हम तब चले जाएंगे. And that's what is foreign diplomacy is all about. That you that, do not have long term friends and long term enemies. I guess that's the because uh, we have the biggest market anyone can give to. The business class. Second biggest market, yes. Yes, because we don't produce uh, things like if the phones we are using or like iPhone, which is being assembled in uh, China only, and mm. it is the pride of USA. Mm. Then and majority of phone companies are having uh, their bases in China and selling in India, like I, M I, O O V. Everything. Hello. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Imad. So everything like we just only give a good market to China. That's why India is a like uh, if each and every country like US and uh, uh, China wants their India on their side. Mm hmm. Because they are the capitalist country. Uh, like US is a capitalist country. One point. Uh, the, all the things you said is right. That is one side of the story. There is yes, also sir. certain things that uh, India, uh, you are dependent upon India because India has a strong influence in Indian Ocean. Yes, and all the trades you want to do with Europe and all these trades, all the trades are not possible through Iran and all these Obor and all that because it will take time. So Indian Ocean uh, assistance from Indian Army, Indian Navy is also really important. So all these things matter. India is a geopolitical standpoint, and as a, it's a, a nuclear state, it's, on, it's your neighbor. You want good relationship with India. And that's what is the thing. And plus, you want a pressing point on India too. That if you do not want good relationship, we have a Pakistan with you. So that's what we need to find one one state for that. We could do the same thing with the like we can we can go and make our relationship with Vietnam, good relationship with Vietnam, or we can go and make a good relationship with Taiwan, and then we can press on China through Taiwan or Vietnam. So that's what is the game is all about. That it's like a chess. If you play chess. You 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 at times you bluff. सामने वाले को bluff करने के लिए भी आप कुछ करते हैं तो it's foreign policy all about. Just to bluff the queen. Yeah, I hope I made some sense to you. Uh, yes. Okay. I guess there is no questions left from the students. Uh, if I could say one thing to all of you. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Sir. Okay. Okay, uh, maximum of you are law students, and uh, I hope you are studying in different institutes in India. But I would say one thing to all of you that uh, law is not as boring as uh, at times it sounds. It's really fun. It's really interesting. The way we study law is really important. We never study law from the context of sociology, foreign policy, diplomacy, politics. It is all about the combination of that. Like uh, you all are, if you are five-year student, so हम लोगों ने वो पढ़ा होगा subject like history, sociology, and मैं भी जब मैं भी five-year का student रहा हूँ, तो मैंने भी five-year से ही पढ़ा था. तो हम लोग मैं ही philosophy थी कि यार ये तो appetizer है, मतलब salad वालाद है. जब contract, constitution, international law शुरू होगा, तब main course आएगा. तो हम लोग हमेशा लगता है यार ये तो pass करना है, main तो उधर आएगा. But बच्चों ऐसा होता नहीं है. we should uh, these subjects are really important because they set the tune for it i teach constitution law classes in my university and i take philosophy religion psychology economy all put in to together and then that's how i teach constitution 
so you cannot study any law without combining that thing to something else and that's what is my wish to all of you that please don't study law in isolation please make it interesting and that's what is law about, law, law all about that you make and merge things together and uh, uh, I, because i am not I, i teach in one university and i cannot reach to everywhere that's why i started my youtube channel it's very immature and pre uh, just initial days of my channel just few videos are there but i've started it it's panjrishi talks so if you want you can go and sub- like it uh, or see it or subscribe it uh, I, i hope that much of self promotion is allowed are there so yes for sure for sure so if you want if you want to go through it you can go through it and uh, it's a uh, it's not for money making because i have demonetized it it will never be monetized ever so it's not for money it's all for uh, telling uh, what i teach and how i teach uh, to all of you so i would like to add one thing that mentors like you can make the subject interesting <laughs> thank you so much so thank you so much and i give the honor to himanshu that please deliver the vote of thanks and conclude the session i guess everyone has enjoyed the hello yes yeah uh, i guess everyone has enjoyed the session taken by our speaker sir so i just want to uh, conclude and give thanks of both to from my side and from adya sides to all the students and to respected sir that you have given a special time to us with your words you have enlightened us, uh, us with your words so thank you so much sir and the students who have attended this webinar hope we will continue this work and we will be in touch with everyone for future uh, future webinars on different topics uh, and i guess uh, i would request if someone have other topics about the webinar you can convey with us or uh, with me or adya so we can get into touch with sir for future webinars so thank you so much Thank you Adya thank you Manchu Thank you so much sir for your precious time thank you so much Take care of yourself Thank you sir thank you all the participant stay home stay safe